330 GTC is now worth a million dollars? <laughs> and if so, please explain why. Well, it's, it's an interesting uh, uh, question to consider, to sort of, uh, if you will, kind of extrapolate into the market what's happening at that high altitude upper echelon level. Uh, the interesting thing, if, if you think about it, 20 years ago, I mean, selling a million dollar car happened you know, once or twice a year when you did a Bugatti Royale or something like that. Um, uh, interestingly enough, when we designed Russo and Steel, I really wanted that, as Rick says, sort of broader base of the pyramid underneath. Um, we specifically went for that marketplace. Um, the question was, you know, is there a trickle-down effect from that upper echelon? It's always hard for me to talk about that because I kind of, kind of take my auctioneer hat off and put my enthusiast hat on. Um, and it's always a bit of an alarm bell that rings in my head when cars are starting to be talked about as investments and commodities and these types of things. And you see these, this sort of hedge fund mentality start to participate in our hobby. Um, you guys have probably heard me say a thousand times before, you know, if that old car you bought is worth five bucks tomorrow and it's still putting the same grin on your face, then you're doing it right. And we've lost a little bit of that, I think, in some of the real, real high end. Um, you know, let's face it, when you buy a 16, 18, 27 million dollar Ferrari, um, that's not an impulsive purchase. I mean, you're having conversations with your, uh, you know, your estate planner, your money manager, uh, your ex-wife's attorney. Um, you know, you're, you're not showing up on the auction block going, hey, it's a nice, you know, 59 Corvette with a white coat and that bitch and I'm going to buy it and drive it. It's not impulsive. Um, I like that emotional sector of the marketplace, but it's also Russo and Steel. I, I, trust me, I'm well aware of, there's a whole group of clients out there that say, hey Drew, you know, this, you know, crazy mosh pit auction in the round sort of insanity that you do, that just ain't my bag. You know, I want to buy an uber serious car in an uber serious environment. And I get that, you know, Russo and Steel is not going to be for everybody. I think the thing that I'm, I'm most, maybe use the word gratified, maybe intrigued, I don't know, but the marketplace has sectored itself so well with all of the different houses and what they do. If you think about it, everyone has really kind of got their little niche, what they're doing and how they're doing it, and they're really comfortable with who they are.